Now, the next level are the ecosystems, and these... I think now is a good time to start talking about the different biomes, at least pretty basically. Um, nothing too specific yet. And the ecosystems are basically areas, different characteristic areas on Earth, otherwise known as biomes, as I was saying before. And there are eight terrestrial biomes and two different aquatic biomes that are really the main ones that you need to worry about um, and so to start let's start with the terrestrial biomes and the first of it is are the tropical rainforests and these are always categorized as having high rain levels high temperatures high amounts of vegetation and life and these are usually very very dense and even have plants that are like vines, epiphytes, and there's a vast variety of different types of organisms living here. And usually you'll find these in Central America, Central Africa, the Amazon Basin, Basin and Southeast Asia, usually along the equator. Um, and these are very productive, diverse communities, as I was saying before. The second on our list is are the savannas, and these are the grasslands, and they have relatively low rainfall levels, 10 inches per year, 10 to 30 per year, and although they, it is considerably more than what the deserts get, and these are very bad for regular herbivorous animals as they don't really provide any cover from carnivorous animals, and so what you'll see are herbivores that have adapted to this sort of environment with hooves, long legs, and they're a able to run very fast escape most predators. And you'll find these east of the U.S. Rockies, the steppes of the Ukraine, and the pampas of Argentina. Now, a very dry region on Earth are the deserts. And... This is characterized by less than 10 inches of rain per year, and even that, that rain is in very spread out cloud, and the growing seasons, therefore, are limited to the days after these cloud bursts of rains. So, you'll find plants and animals that have adapted to this sort of uh, environment, such as cacti, lizards, things like that, and these are organisms that actively conserve water, and try to avoid extreme heats and you'll find these um, relatively well-known areas and examples are the Sahara in Africa the Mojave Desert in the US and the Gobi Desert in Asia now next on our list is an area that's not so extreme the temperate deciduous forest and these are the leafy leafy trees that will drop their leaves during the cold and the soil therefore is rich with decaying matter um and occupied by worms fungus things like that and you'll usually see tree species such as beech maples oaks willows and it it's an area that has moderate amounts of rainfall and these are located in northeastern and central eastern Europe and in central Europe mainly. Now, as you travel farther north, you start reaching the coniferous forest, and these are the trees whose leaves will not shed during the winter. And these are relatively dry, and um, now you'll find trees such as fir, pine, spruces, etc. And these have all adapted for water conservation. And you'll start to see a lot of moss, lichens, etc. And animals like moose, deer, black bears, hares, wolves, and porcupines. And these you can find extreme northern parts of the U.S. And a lot of them in Canada. Now as you travel even farther north you'll start to reach the taiga where only the spruce will grow. 
and this is where you'll start to see a lot of the floor covered by moss, lichens, things like that, and birds are the most common animal. However, you still can see black bear, moose, and wolves here as well. And these are found in northern Canada and in Russia. Now, traveling even farther north are the tundra, which is very, very cold. Um, the ground is almost always frozen in a state called permafrost, and although it can melt in the summer. And in the summer, the gro that's when the growing season begins, and the ground becomes wet, marshy, and things like that. And you'll see lichens, moss, polar bears, arcticans live here. And these are usually the only organisms that have adapted to living in this sort of sort of conditions and you won't find any trees as their roots cannot penetrate the permafrost most of the year <coughs> excuse me now as you travel even farther north you'll reach the polar regions which are the northern ice sheets and there is a very little vegetation um and this is where you where you'll start to see seals walruses penguins and things like that and these are all animals that have adapted to the extreme cold by uh, maintaining high levels of blubber and fat to insulate their bodies and these are animals that usually prey on the marine life in the uh, polar oceans now moving on the quad there are two types of aquatic biomes and as you can expect they're divided into marine biomes which are the salt water regions of the earth and freshwater biomes such as lakes, rivers, ponds, marshes, etc. Now, the more interesting of them are the marine biomes, and these can be divided into four different regions the intertidal, the littoral, pelagic, and benthic zones. <coughs> Let's start with the littoral. The littoral is the continental shelf area that, usually up to 600 feet in depth, and this is where you see the crustaceans, algae, crabs, and a lot of the smaller species of fish. And just moving downwards, um, let's move on to the pelagic zone. And this can be further divided into the photic and aphotic. And as the name would suggest, the photic is where light can penetrate to aphotic, where light cannot penetrate. And Usually the light reaches a depth around 600 feet and <coughs> in this photic region you'll see plankton and uh, nectin which are different active swimmers as f such as fish, sharks, whales and things that feed on the plankton and the smaller fish and you'll see a lot of autotrophs such as the diota, a type of algae and you you'll see organisms that can produce energy through photosynthesis. However, as you travel further down, you'll reach the aphotic zone, which here you'll see the, a very competitive zone with all these predators and fish that have adapted to living in cold temperatures, high pressures, and in complete darkness, and you will not see any autotrophs. Um, now the ocean floor, when I say benthic zone, people characterize it as the zone where only the extreme forms of life can live, such as the crustaceans, the strange, strange organisms. And in a way, that's true. But the zone can also—it's just the ocean floor in general. So it can be photic, aphotic, etc. You can have a benthic zone in the intertidal zone, and. Which actually brings us to the intertidal zone. And this is the zone that isn't always covered by water. And it has periods of dryness such as low tide. And you'll see sea stars, crabs, clams, snails, things of this nature in this area. Things that can live in periods of dryness without dying. Now, moving on to the freshwater biomes. And here, since usually these are some bodies of water than the salt water comparisons, 
you have to start uh, worrying about the temperature, the transparency, the depth, the available carbon dioxide and oxygen, and in certain regions, the salt concentration. And usually, this, um, especially in the northern zones, have adapted to cold winter months where the sh a sheet of ice will form over this body of water. And, um, and you'll see a lot of, a lot of fish that have constant homeostasis, homeostatic mechanisms to maintain the water balance in their bodies because they do not have to worry about attrition gradient from the excess salt in, found in the oceans. And, and here you'll, interestingly enough, you'll see organisms, amphibians, that have adapted to being both in fresh water and on land. All right, that's all for now. Uh, next segment, we'll start discussing uh, communities and different populations of organisms. Thanks for watching.